Welcome to the Joy of Music. My name is Diane Bish, and I would like to invite you to join us today as we bring you a special program, a musical journey on the Seine River. On our journey, we travel from Paris to Normandy, France, with music from great cathedrals and organs found along the beautiful Seine River. Thank you for joining us. The Notre Dame Cathedral of Evreux, France is a Roman Catholic cathedral and a national monument. The lower portions of the nave date back to the 11th century and the two towers from the Renaissance period, the north portal and transept in flamboyant Gothic and late 15th century tower and spires. Standing above the cathedral nave is one of the great new organs of France.
Not far from the town of Vernon in Upper Normandy is the Commune of Giverny, best known as the location of Claude Monet's home and gardens. It was here where many of Monet's impressionistic paintings were created. Our musical journey on the Seine River takes us on to the town of Codebec en Co. The town nestled along the Seine River is small but charming. The main attraction of the village is the massive Codebec Cathedral, which towers over the town. Along with the exterior and interior treasures, we find the impressive great organ from the early 16th century.
We travel on the Seine River from Côte de en co to Rouen, France. Along the way, we enjoy the sights and the many pleasantries on our riverboat. Our journey on the Seine River takes us to Rouen in the north part of France. It is the capital of Upper Normandy and the historic capital of Normandy. The Seine River was key to Rouen's development into one of France's greatest ports down through the century. From Rouen, we make a day trip by land to the Normandy beaches. On June 6, 1944, now known as D-Day, Operation Overlord, the long-awaited invasion of Northwest Europe, 
began with Allied landings on the coast of the Normandy beaches. The task was formidable, for the Germans had turned the coastline into an interlinked series of strong points, each with guns, pillboxes, barbed wire, landmines, and beach obstacles. Following an extensive bombardment of the assault areas, the Allies launched a simultaneous landing of U.S., British, Canadian, and French forces on five separate beaches codenamed Sword Beach, Juno Beach, Gold Beach, Omaha Beach, Utah Beach. All told, D-Day was a magnificent accomplishment. The formidable Atlantic Wall had been successfully breached. By the end of D-Day, the Allies had landed more than 150,000 troops in France by sea and air, 6,000 vehicles including 900 tanks, 600 guns, and about 4,000 tons of supplies, and astonishingly had achieved complete surprise in doing so. The victory was a turning point in World War II and led to the liberation of Europe and the defeat of Nazi Germany. Now more than 60 years after D-Day, the Normandy coast is peaceful with lovely seaside towns and picturesque beaches. Behind the coast is an old-fashioned farming landscape of grain fields, cattle and pastures, hedges and farmhouses. But the memories of war and D-Day are ingrained in the landscape. Along the 50-mile D-Day invasion coast, there are the remains of German gun emplacements and bunkers. World War memorials and monuments mark where the Allied forces landed on the beaches. Inland, there are monuments in almost every village. Beautiful cemeteries overlook the sea and countryside and are essential stops along the way to understand and reflect on the human cost of the war.
My name is Diane Bish, and I thank you for joining us today on The Joy of Music, as we have brought you a special program from France, a musical journey on the Seine River. With music from historic towns, cathedrals, and churches along the way. Thank you for joining us.